Yeah. Radio style? Radio Ra- style. Oh, look, oh, I can even hear Oh, it. yeah, the Indy 7678. It's got a very close proximity effect. It's not like a 57 or a 58, it, but it does have that boost, that bump at the bottom end, which is nice. So you it get that is. kind of radio tone without so spending 400 bucks a piece on SM7Bs. And the first three vocal mics I bought in, what would that have been? That would have been, what, 91, 92? I bought three of these. Oh, yeah, the, the ND760. Yeah, they're, they're great, man. I love they're them. Not, they would not be in this good a shape as I see yours are now. Yeah. But um, when I worked at the music store back then, that they were told to me, it's like, uh, you could buy an SM58 or you could buy a Beta 58. But this one has the same diaphragm as a 58 beta. Yeah. And uh, it costs you way less. And I said, all right, let's do that. As m- Yeah. Uh, with many other things that uh, that music store experience taught me. No, I love them. I love the EV microphones. Uh, I like EV speakers and shit like that. Like, I think they're a good company. I don't know. They're awesome. So, uh, if, yeah, I mean, I guess we're already in it, right? Uh, hey, everybody. This is uh, To the Fullest with Jason Froerg. Uh, I have uh, my very good friend Jeremy Morrow on the podcast today. Nice to have you here. Uh, Jeremy's a professional video engineer. Uh, is that what you would call it, right? Video and what? That is the title AV that is tech. on uh, <laughs> my podcast. Uh, email address and uh, business cards yeah I, I i i used to feel that i was a live event specialist okay. which used to not limit what i could do on the audio visual and, and if i had to in a pinch the lighting side sorry boys you know i i love you all and i know how hard you all work just not my flavor and uh but you know that when we're all on show site together we all play for the same team and the same colors and if i have to i will be more than happy to work with our lighting team as well oh yeah lights are always fun i like doing lights man making shit shiny making shit flashy i mainly like programming the lights you know like it's really nice yeah, other people run all the cables and hang them for me you know and I can that's just, a whole I different push thing buttons, but you fun. know when trying to get the white balance and making sure that everything looks as nice as possible on camera and you know going to records which is you know one of my most favorite things to do because you know it's, it the records are where it matters and uh i really enjoy like the how easy it is when you can communicate with people that are trying to get to the same ends do you know we're not trying to show who's better or who's worse it's just the people that you know really truly believe it's like we can do this we have all the things we have all the people we have all the time and effort to do it let's do it right let's do it properly and then we do it you know and it's great and it feels so good when we get done with that, you know, I just, I, those are the things like with what we're all going through is what I miss the most is like the end of like, no matter how difficult it is and no matter what the adversity is of those moments and those hurdles, they're not obstacles, they're hurdles. Yeah it's that is really where it's at you know because we we come together and we listen to each other no matter is we don't want to hear what the other person wants to say but at the same time we do want to hear because we all really want that same end result and time and time and time again we deliver over and over above and beyond what most people expect even our own expectations at most times it's like i don't even you know you wake up in the morning after like going to bed going thinking like how are we going to do this when we wake up you know we're, we're going to do this it's going to happen but what are we going to do you know and it happens and then you look back at it that afternoon when you're sitting there eating dinner or whatever it is and you're just like holy I, we we all i we all every one of us not anybody by themselves we we came together and we made this happen you know those are the moments i miss those are the mm-hmm. things that i really really miss because it's just 
that sense of accomplishment <laughs> that sense of accomplishment man you know like you when you I, I always love coming back from lunch after we've done you know we built something amazing you know it, it was it was on a piece of paper it was in a bunch of emails and now it's in the fucking air and it's making noise it's making lights it's making video and it's like alive it's this beautiful thing and we're just like we just did that in a day or two right and it's like how the you know, it, it's a, it's incredible uh, and um, and yeah, that sense of accomplishment that you have, where they they put you a under the gun, you know, like you, this needs to be done in an extremely quick manner, and there's no room for error, and uh, and it all has to just be fucking perfect and go off without the hitch, and somehow or another, like you sit there at the end of the gig loading out, pushing cases towards a truck going on the fuck that happened but it happened it's amazing you know and it's <laughs> it, just yeah it, yes it is you know and yeah and, and sometimes you lose you lose uh perspective when you're pushing the cases back towards the truck because that's the part that no one wants to be a part of you know and uh i am definitely guilty of losing perspective on those moments you yeah know? i'm spent i've i've done my thing you know I just want to get back to my family sometimes. I just want to do my thing. But, uh, you know, it's one of the most important parts is getting it back in the truck, getting it back to the shop so yeah. we can do it next time and we can do it again. And I think that's what a lot of people are missing right now is that the we, we provide such an important part of what's missing with what the new normal is in my opinion yeah for what that's worth you know i know that i my opinion is what it is um but i feel like bringing smiles to the world is what our whole industry is based on absolutely i've said that f over and over again for years and years now and um i think that's really important I think that's really important to let people know that how it may be a small part of the economy, if you will, but it's not. It may be a few people that you know in your life, but that still doesn't matter, just like the rest of it. You know, it's it really affects people we were the first to be cut off we'll be the first to go back to work in our normalcy and mm -hmm. the way that we used to operate and everyone used to love coming to our events and doing the things that we used to do that we used to facilitate no, no. and I don't believe that anybody wants that to not come as soon as possible i do believe that there is a respect for the fear of what is possible and i do not believe that that is a hoax yeah but i'm uh i'm looking forward to getting back to it as well man you know a lot of my friends have been talking about uh they're worried it's not gonna we're not gonna be able to go back to like work and put on shows for people for like at least another six months or something like that because they don't know what these quarantine rules are going to be what the social distancing standards are going to be how many people are going to be allowed to put in a room depending on the square footage of the room like are we even going to be able to do fucking shows man you know like that's the that's the scary part about it all like i uh i i i, I got this big pa i just picked up so um, i was getting geared up to start like putting on all these shows for sure and uh and now i don't know when i don't know when it's gonna happen um yeah, like yeah I, it's 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 a crazy time out there like some people think it's just gonna we're gonna spring right back to life like i, I know mary goodman's just like no nope, we're just fucking open the casinos <laughs> we're going right back to work <laughs> and it's like i don't happen. think that's a good idea you can get your fucking ass sued <laughs> and uh get a, get a lot of people killed right and just spread the disease all over the fucking world again i i'm really interested to see how they're gonna open up the casinos because like it's gonna happen in the next week or so yeah g judging by the news and I think that they have really good ideas involved in that, and I, even if you can do all the conferences at half volume, you know, I think 
putting out even something as dumb as a breakout room and something is a general session with half the people and you do the spacing I think there's something in there I think there's there's something to be found in that I think there's a new way to do it with having that space available and not making it seem like it's just trying to recreate the old yeah do you know what i mean like there has to be a new way of doing that and i think um you know like there used to be back in the days with uh rock and roll concerts there used to be uh like they would have like the stage would go around a little pit of people and things right yeah and i know that seems like oh well that you're getting too close to people no it's like well you know start doing the pockets of things and you know they've they've always had the tables with the little reserve signs and what have you doesn't the reserve sign equal more now yeah isn't it that simple like we've really done the half moons for years with a 16 foot stage yeah it's I mean, everybody well, never, keep a chair never, in between never you. Everyone was ever that really close because there's only like 10 or 15 people in the room anyways. Yeah. And I've seen people like uh, like Peppers out doing uh, all the streaming stuff. And he's got, uh, he's got a really slick-ass like live stream, live, live cast where he can do a bunch of breakout rooms and stuff without ever having to bring people to a convention center. And he's, getting, he's, he's got some really interesting thoughts on that and, and getting geared up to do all kinds of cool shit. And uh, yeah. we might be seeing a lot of that, too, where we just got to do everything in, like, a live studio production almost and just broadcast it out to the world instead of having these conventions yeah. come back. Small little studios everywhere. Yeah. And it'll just be, yeah, it'll just be something like this where we just pack it all up in some cases and, and drag it down to uh, For sure. a little area and we'll fucking set up and, and put on a bunch of breakouts and, pro and broadcast them all live instead of... <laughs> <laughs> right. Putting up a bunch of speakers. So, what have you been doing during the the quarantine? Uh, I have uh, I've been trying to find my sanity is what I've been trying to do. Like I always said, if I had time, because like like our jobs takes all your fucking time, right? I mean, we're working mm -hmm. sixteen hour days, and we work those days fucking like weeks on end. It just gets it gets very much um, it gets difficult to be a person when you're doing that all the time and i always said to myself like i would if i had the ability to like be responsible for myself and my time and shit like i would i would do it you know i'd wake up i'd work out i'd like focus my energies on creative outlets and i've been so far pretty good about that you know like mm -hmm. i try to go and to bed so at what 10. are some of those uh creative outlets that you have decided that you want to be a part of i have um i'm basically going with the uh the whole like live entertainment personality kind of culture that's developed where people can create this TV podcast host, radio host well yeah like you well not just that but like yeah you create a podcast that people can listen to and then i'm mm -hmm. working on a stand-up routine that i want to oh, go start stand -up doing routines? yeah right. oh. i got uh, uh okay i i'm not yeah. sure i've heard this but carry on if yeah. you had other things you were there was more things in the list there, there. are more things in the list there yeah no i am um no, I'm I, I'm doing um uh, I'm working on some new music, um you know live or original. It'll be like original recording music. And oh, original. Yeah, so original not recorded the music. Cover. No, not the Primus thing. Uh, I I mean I still want to do that, but that's. But that's you had be on hiatus. Once once upon a time, yeah. I, I keep hearing from other people yeah. that you had this band that was like that I'm supposed to have heard of, but I I I, I am uh, oh. obviously very ignorant of that i don't really know the history i keep seeing pictures here and there from random facebook piece posts from different people yeah that you were in this thing what was that called cracker man cracker it's a man. uh yeah it was a fun little punk rock band that me and a couple friends were in and uh you know we wrote just you know simple ass like three chord basic progression hard rock songs one, four five four one yep, yep. Exactly. Uh, hey there you go 
and uh, it works right it works really well yeah and like uh we uh we had a lot of fun and uh -huh. we'd smash our guitars like anytime we'd get into a town i'd go to a pawn shop and buy a guitar <laughs> for 75 bucks or a bass for 75 bucks <laughs> and uh you know just rub some alcohol on the strings <laughs> fucking play it at the end of the set smash that bitch onto the next fucking city <laughs> and uh no it was fun man we had a lot of t uh, no, we i mean well fun. tell me about this where did you guys go uh not not too many places man you know just like uh like we went outside we, of nevada yeah did you get, we got did you get we, as far as like we pennsylvania went, no we went all the way to Ohio. boston oh yeah all the way to boston yeah uh so yeah we, we we did a little bit but uh not as much as we wanted to it kind of dissolved really fast because uh yeah you know like it, it was getting a little out of control it and was and i was trying to like I was just getting this corporate world right. Like I was cutting uh -oh. my hair, like because when I was in that band, wait, 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 that's when I had that, the beard. Wait, wait, when you decided to, when you cut your hair yeah. to be in this corporate world, that was you were still doing the cracker. No, I I shaved my face at a certain point and like cut my hair a little shorter than like it was like you know I was fucking full on grizzly. I didn't I hadn't had a haircut or shaved my face or like done anything like not even like really trimmed my beard. Uh, for like six years or something like that at that point. What? Yeah, I was just a wild man. Did you wash it though? I right? washed. I was clean. I mean, you were hygienic. Yeah, I was hygienic. I mean, you really, you, you took yeah. care of it. I mean, I wiped my own ass. Yeah. I, I would, <laughs> I, 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 okay, so that's a third spot now that you brought up. <laughs> it's a third spot. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, no, um, <laughs> no, I think so, it was, just, it was, a, it was a, the, one of those plate points in life where, you, you know, an opportunity was presented to me to make real money and, like, pursue this, like, career where I could, like, you know, I, I, I had the best, I, I progressively had the best year of my life financially every year since I've, like started the corporate field right like it mm -hmm. just my annual income you were still climbs. doing the cracker barrel thing i was still doing the cracker man thing the cracker barrel <laughs> uh for a little bit when i was doing the corporate thing but it you know kind of meshed it meshed and um it, it did yeah yeah it's uh and and i it was just the corporate thing takes too much of my time and it's like you, you know when you're trying to do that kind of commitment to a rock band it's like the, the rock band needs a lot of time too especially when you're like you pushed it to a point where i mean we had uh, six million views on uh, this video of us smashing guitars on this morning talk show and um you know we were on howard stern a couple times and like you know we were getting like we were playing with a lot of oh, nationals cracker barrel right uh, right, right, right shut the fuck up <laughs> and uh no it was fun <laughs> right it was fun it was and you know i i uh i loved it i loved every minute of it man yeah. actually I, I i was just hanging out with tyler yesterday were you? Yeah, he might actually be coming by tonight, actually, <laughs> to play Monopoly. We were, <laughs> there you go, <laughs> like, right? Like, so yeah, we're that's still like, friends. We're, we're, that's, really, that's we're all good really friends. really what the, uh, you know, that I, I think, isn't that the new normal, really, yeah. is, like, how do we find time to spend time with those people that we really want to spend time with? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, that's the important part of life, man. Like, you got to pick those people, too. Like, you can't just have... You can't spend time with everybody, man. Like, it's it's a good sentiment, and I love everybody. But it's like, you really have to choose a, a few close people that you really trust and love and, and put effort into those relationships. Because relationships are effort. It's like, it's like having something in your garden. You have to water it all the time. You have to make sure it's doing good. Oh, it's you something you have to take care of. Yeah. You, you should, oh, oh, I got to see your garden. Oh, man the wife has put so much time and effort recently it is absolutely amazing like it is one of the few times like i wake up in the morning i do my morning wake up ritual like take the dog outside sit outside and look in the backyard and like the growth between last year and this year of all the green foliage and all the flowers and everything man it is so amazing it is so worth i'm so glad that it has happened so uh you know like if this had happened and i had just like a dirt lot like most of the people in our town have that haven't finished their backyards you know yeah. oh yeah like oh my god 90 percent of them it's just like it's either like it's just a big empty rock lot right or empty dirt lot that's just getting overgrown by fucking weeds and it's just like oh man that's just the 
It's like more depressing than having a backyard at all. <laughs> well, this fucking absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Rolling like, around in your backyard. And, I, and this is the first summer uh, since we've moved into the new house. It's like, oh, I can sit on this nice little chair that we finally have chairs, and uh, and I, I credit everything to my wife for picking out the chairs, the umbrella, and making all the greenery and everything happen, and deciding how we put the rocks and <laughs> you know all of it. It's great, and uh, yeah. Like when I wake up in the morning and everyone's still kind of asleep and the sun's kind of rising, like I can just sit there and like I can enjoy it for 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. And quiet and maybe there's a bird and you know, like just little simple moments. Little moment, like yeah. I'm a normal person in the middle of a big freaking desert. <laughs> right. I love that point in the morning, man. Like um, I've been, I've been really focusing on like getting out and meditating after my workout every day it's like 15 fucking minutes of like just close your meditating eyes after your workout yeah all right how's the workout meditating are you are you still on the crazy diet are you back on the crazy diet i'm getting back to the crazy diet i'm getting back i'm to getting the crazy back to the crazy diet, diet. so when the, okay, when the wait, virus whoa, hit we whoa, said fuck whoa, it whoa, whoa. let's let, yeah? let's, let's roll hear? back let's, 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 <laughs> let's roll back <laughs> so, we, uh we uh you need to set this up i need this well, is your radio or is, podcast <laughs> or whatever <laughs> this is your idea uh, you're referring you to, to my my to. sober october insanity <laughs> that i was doing <laughs> yes yeah exactly i uh you need to set this up and <laughs> well no i as you as you know i'm a huge fan of like the the joe rogan podcast i love that man and uh uh you know part of part of the thing i'm like trying to model after right like i'm trying to do the same shtick he's doing right like the podcast and the stand-up routine but uh, you know i'm I know my musician friends. He knows his fucking wrestling friends, right? <laughs> or his fighting <laughs> friends, right? So it's like, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do whatever I can to kind of try to, try to do that kind of bullshit. But no, he does the, the, uh, sober October thing. And as he is a big influence on me, I thought I'd try it out. And it was a huge, uh, eye opener in my life, really. Like I really, uh, I hadn't been that in that state of mind my entire life like literally my entire life because i kicked the caffeine i kicked the sugar and uh, you know and uh, i stopped smoking weed and all that stuff and um the caffeine and the sugar are fucking drugs man like that's those are drugs like you don't realize it until you stop taking them uh all the fucking time that you were on goddamn drugs and they are addicting to shit you have withdrawals from them um, oh yeah you know they like the sugar has uh, crashes you crash from fucking candy man like they, that's what drugs do you know they bring you up here and then you fucking crash right uh so yeah i got rid of all that shit and i felt amazing and then of course you know, in the end of october end of october into november you're going to thanksgiving christmas we're having fun and i started smoking wait wait wait, wait wait cranberry sauce cranberry sauce bro did you have cranberry sauce i had, had all of it oh, i had oh, all wait, of wait, it wait wait sweet potatoes sweet potatoes Pecan pie, I love pecan pie. Corn, corn. I do. We we go down on it. We get down on it pretty good. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, we do it all right. All right. The uh, the sweet potatoes with the you get the fucking marshmallows all over the top of them. Oh, that's right? like a whole nother level. That's though. the good ones right there. It's like brown sugar. Mm -hmm. It's just like brown sugar. I was gonna say brown sugar, but you said brown and sugar marshmallows. and marshmallows. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm so. fucking eating that. <laughs> you know, like I don't give a fuck. Okay, I did so six weeks fucking clean and sober. It's like I'm like I'm gonna eat the I'm gonna eat the sweet potatoes. So after Thanksgiving, then what happened? Uh, I just started. I went back to my old habits, pretty much. You know, it was just like it was the fucking holidays, smoking weed with my homies, and uh, and I was like, oh well, you know, kind of baked. There was coffee a sounds good. There was a climax there, and then it just went. Yeah, that's how it works. You know, <laughs> that's life. Life's all about you know just ups and downs, man. It's the, the ebb and flow, and uh, and so yeah, I'm just I'm going. I'm trying to get back to that point where. Um, Cause I mean, like you know, the fucking the COVID hit, right? And it was just like, fuck it. I just started. So I, I've been. I started smoking weed like crazy and not giving a fuck. You know, drinking coffee whenever I felt like it. And we went to the store and bought a bunch of cookies and shit. And I was just like, if I'm trapped in my house watching movies, I'm gonna have fucking snacks. <laughs> you know, fuck that, right? So I found a bag, like the little <laughs> snack size, like you would put in your lunch when you were a kid. Yeah. Of Fritos yesterday, I thought I found the golden ticket. <laughs> 
I kid you not. Uh, <laughs> I really did, dude. Yeah. I was like, oh my god. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. It's uh but no, I'm trying to get back to some kind of normal, man. Like uh I just uh I let the you know, the world fucking came to an end for a second and then he goes, Fuck it and then you go, Well, can't say fuck it forever. And uh, right? no, I yes, yeah, so I'm just trying to find my peace again, my peace of mind, and like meditation and 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 that kind of stuff really helps with like getting rid of the weed because there's those points where you get all agitated and irritated, and it's like if you don't have a uh, tools in place and like something to like figure out how to deal with those emotions besides just smoking weed or taking a fucking pill or smoking a cigarette or whatever you're doing, uh, chemically altering your body to and mind to uh, deal with your emotions instead of dealing with your emotions. Um, yeah, it helps a lot. It helps a lot to, and then you're stuck, you know, because you're like, well, I'm not going to do it. And I have to fucking, and then you're like, and then you, I, I end up fucking meditating three times a day because I'm fucking pissed off all the time. It's my only, it's my only like recourse to deal with it. I keep watching Marvel movies oh, and doing dude. fake yoga. Like, I just oh, yeah. know how to stretch out. I just know how to like really like just get it going, you know? And that's like, I don't know if it's real yoga, well, but like, that and the star wars movies and like th things that i've seen before the same idea yeah it's like i i just have to do this to like stretch it out or whatever and i don't know if that's the right way or the proper way of doing it it just seems like a better way of doing it than the other things that you have mentioned yeah <laughs> well the um it's funny that you bring that up because i'm actually working on a small little youtube series for my my thing right of like course I, have, you are. I have my <laughs> i have my space brain station that i uh, they put in up and uh if you've seen on there um i've i've i do like meditation sleep videos i've done a couple of those that i'm trying to put on there and now we're working on a small yoga series which will be like a five minute 10 minute 15 minute and then like some extended ones um, but where you can go on and just, uh, just show you some basic postures, um, <laughs> and nothing fancy, but it's like, it's good. It's good money. Like this is the Iron Man pose. Yeah, exactly. Hulk. Hulk. <laughs> so yeah, no, we're, um, we're looking to build a little meditation platform in the backyard. That's like, it'll be like an eight by eight and we can do some, we can do our yoga outside like, under the trees you, instead of can, doing them in, can inside you, in the carpet. Can you do the whole video of the sand on sand off to make it smooth? Maybe. Before you varnish it? Maybe. I'm just maybe I could do the whole like building of the building of the meditation. I'm just saying video. we all That's have the time. Cool. We all have the effort. Right. Like I literally found a drum set. <laughs> <laughs> How are you liking your drum set? I want to play it more. Of course. I um I'm I'm more perplexed right now of how I'm gonna build a baffle between uh, the window because the window literally turns it into a speaker, right? Yeah. Turns the room into a speaker and amplifies it out to the rest of the neighborhood. And it makes it way louder than I am actually being. Yeah. And I unfortunately only know how to play one way. And <laughs> uh, no, I know actually how to play lots of ways, but it's always loud. It's drums. Yeah. It's a real drum set, right? And... Uh, so I think I think I want to make a rectangle that has styrofoam on one side and a piece of carpet on one side on the other side and then be able to hang it in front of the window. But I want to be able to take it up and down because I want the light I want light to be able to come back through. Well, you know, I, I don't want to yeah. lose the room. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, why don't it's you just put small. a thick curtain up, man? You know, thick curtain will dampen the shit out of that enough to where your neighbors will just be like, "Oh, he's got his maybe he's got his yeah. radio up a little yeah, loud." Yeah, well, uh, all but all of our neighbors, like our neighborhood, is a very it's very similar to like a brownstone neighborhood. Okay. Except for the walls don't touch. There's just enough, but there's not far enough for things like that. Uh. But we all have our thing going on, and it's great. And uh, again, it's like. I could probably do it and just uh, like it like I said I'm I'm getting close the, the fact that I even said the rectangular thing that I hang in front of the window that is uh, jagged on the one side and uh, a soft curtain closer to the window will break up everything like you were saying like you mm -hmm. put the curtain and you put anything in front of it yeah 
and then I saw a bunch of these ads today for all this stone or uh, foam stuff and that kind of thing. Of course, you were thinking about acoustic material, and Google drilled into your brain and put it on your fucking newsfeed, right? It, 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 uh, that's been happening a lot more than I want to admit in the last couple of days, to be honest. Wait, I you, you recently put the Alexas in your house, right? Oh, uh, yeah. So but She's not reading my mind. No, but she is listening to your conversations. So we'll be talking about shit, and I won't search for stuff, right? Like, I, 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 it, it, she hears me, and then she puts that shit in my fucking timeline. And, like, sends me advertisements and stuff. Just, like, we're like, oh, yeah, we should probably, like, look into getting, you know, you should probably be weeding the garden or something like that. Or, you know, and it's just like, and then, bam, you fucking get all this fucking gardening stuff just popping up out of nowhere. And it's like, we were just having a conversation about chores we had to fucking do. <laughs> you know? Yeah, right. But, like, they're, they're fucking listening all the time. And it's not like someone's, uh, it's not like the NSA's listening like Edward Snowden, right? It's just a goddamn algorithm that's running. And it's just this fucking computer's just listening to everything you're saying. It's go sell him as much shit as you can push that shit on him and it's just customized advertisements for you you know but you really enjoy having alexa be able to do things in the house yeah i think she's great i think she's fucking I've, awesome i've just started using it recently i've enjoyed it yeah i think she's amazing i love that um like i get the infrared remotes for the tvs i highly recommend the infrared remotes for the tvs because you you just fucking program anything you want into them and it turns all your shit on us so i say a word fucking turn on the living room and she'll bam turn on all my tvs and my surround sound system and everything and it's just ready to fucking go i don't have to touch anything and uh same when i go to like and then i even set up like um routines where i say a word it's bedtime and she'll say you know she, what does she say? She calls me PJ Fabulous and says all these fucking ridiculous shit. But she shut all this down, right, in the living room. And then by the time I get upstairs, our lights are on, the TV's on, it's waiting for us. <laughs> really? It does this whole thing, yeah, like shuts every – you program it. You do whatever you want. And it shuts this whole world down, right? It's like we have some lights hooked up to it and the, the TVs and stuff are all hooked up to it. So it turns all this off, fucking goes upstairs, go upstairs. It turns all the upstairs on for me, and it's just waiting. And we're just sitting there, you know, and uh, – and it, you say one thing, and I say, it's, hey, it's, it's bedtime. And she goes, yeah, yeah, cool. I'll fucking do it, hook it up for you. Or I tell her, you know, hey, I'm home. And uh, she goes, hey, you know, the dog's dog's glad to see is what she says to me. And then she'll start playing some chill jazz in the whatever room I said I'm home in. And it's like, there's so many fucking cool things you can do. I think it's awesome. Do you see the new Samuel L. Jackson feature? No. you got to turn explicit content on, and then Samuel L. Jackson will tell you jokes. Motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> It's so ridiculous. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. But now they had him fucking record a bunch of shit. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to turn that feature on for my eight-year-old son. Yeah, he might not. <laughs> do. I don't know if he's ready for the no, I'm, full I, fiction I mean, experience yet. He probably is, unfortunately. Like, you would be surprised on how advanced he is. I mean, to be... Um, I mean, years ago, people used to think uh, children with autism had, like, problems and what have you, right? Yeah. And uh, I will be the first to admit that social interactions, especially with myself and others around him, are difficult. But he is one of the most intelligent, gifted children. I, he wrote music the other day. And uh, I couldn't believe that he could put notes on paper, like without a staff. He wrote the staff, with the repeats, the quarter notes, the eighth notes, all of it. And it was just amazing. And I was like, well, how, where did you learn this? Like, Dad, I'm just gifted. <laughs> <laughs> and I, the, you know, like, I have, you know me, I have a very hard time, like, um, I do my best to be humble. Yeah. I'm not the best. Sometimes I have my moments where I like to enjoy my moment, but I do my best. Yeah. And uh, for him to say something like that, and just these other moments in the last couple of months where we've been at home and having to do this homeschooling thing, which is Lori, my wife, has just, she's been amazing. She's been absolutely just it's been so difficult for her because he won't let me be involved at all because he wants 
to prove to me and show me and then she gets him to do stuff and man it's just like you just don't really understand what teachers go through to get kids to do stuff that is what we all like looking back at adults it was like so simple what's 10 minus 73 or i'm sorry 73 minus 10 and then he just wants to come up with any reason to just not do school because none of us like school none of us wanted to be at school and yeah. he's at home and he doesn't he's like he has everything around him that you know we've we provided for him that he just he has everything that's not school because we all used to find a reason to skip school to get away from it yeah and then he just comes back and he's like it's 63 all right what's next <laughs> and this is what she goes through question by question, page by page, 10 pages a day. It's amazing. It's just like, I never thought in a million years that homeschooling would be a thing, right? We used to always look back at it as like, oh my goodness, how horrible would we <laughs> that be? Yeah. Now we're all doing it. Yeah. And I'm stuck at home and I don't even get to help because he doesn't let me. He doesn't want me to because he wants to prove it to me yet. He wants to prove it to her and she still has to make sure he gets it done. And he's just as smart, if not smarter than the rest of us and come in with all these reasons why he doesn't need to do it because he's that's uh, six. That's 12. That's yeah. You know, like he just had like it's, to beneath him but at the same time if you just fill it out in the 10 minutes then we just go forward you know like it's it's the new normal it's a new thing where you know like everyone's trying to figure out how we get this next generation to be better than we were because we didn't bring them into this world to suffer right yeah and the biggest fear of the people that have brought in people into this world is we don't want them like that that that's the worst thing you could ever do right like oh hey well here you go here's all my you deal with it i'm out like that's the worst thing you could ever do and i know there's a lot of people in the world that have dealt with that exact situation yeah and i've really tried my best to not be that situation and uh you know we're we're in this it's like no fault of anything i have done and i have made mistakes don't get me wrong i have done things and i have done things that have i could have not be in this position to be saying these things but you know we're trying to go forward all of us we're trying to do our best and uh I just don't want everyone to give up hope because yeah. it's really happening. It's it's getting better. It really is. I I have seen it yeah. firsthand. Yeah, I mean it's it's uh it's just how life goes, you know. It's just ups and downs and this one just is a big down, but it always has to come back up and it'll crash again and it'll cut back up again. You know, it's just the uh it's just this the way we experience this reality uh where everything's got to be such a big deal as it's happening right to us you know right here and now it seems like uh there's so many variables that we can't uh we can't be certain of and so this panic sets in you know what the fuck's gonna happen i don't know what's oh that was the first couple weeks man yeah i i you know we were we were doing one of the last shows in the country you know right around uh St. Patty's, you know, that's that's my that's my anniversary. Yeah. You know, that's that's a very important day to me, you know, but I knew that that was a very important show and we did it. And we really we really did it. I mean, we knocked that one out of the fucking park. Yeah. And uh knowing that when it came to an end that 
could very well be the last one for a very long time yeah and uh i have great respect and admiration for the people that i worked with on that last show and then absolutely for the words that i got from a couple of them on our way home mm -hmm. as we drove back to vegas i i think that that gave me a lot of faith a lot of hope and um i would be a lot more um freaked out now than i was then to be perfectly honest i was a lot more freaked out then than i am now after all this has transpired and this is two months yeah. later now yeah it's nice to know that you have people working with you that see the same end goal yeah absolutely man i uh fuck i can't even remember what the last gig i was on i remember uh what the next one was going to be which is going to be home depot but for the life of me i can't remember what the fuck i was doing before that i always throw that shit uh right out the window the second that the second that truck door closes it's just like empty cash and i might just like walk forward yep and uh fuck i can't for because the life there's always the next one there's always just another thing i'm dealing with it already you know what i mean like you're well you're, no what i'm saying you're walking is there, off was, of this there case, used to be always, always the next one. yeah there used to be always the next one yeah it was never We'd a question always see each other a week or so 10 days at most yeah uh, yeah it's, it's a trip it's i ran um a couple weeks ago or not a couple weeks ago uh last week I I go to the grocery store twice a week. I'm the only one from my household that goes outside the house. Um, I go through all the what have you. Yeah. I ran into two coworkers at the grocery store. And when I stopped and talked to both of them because I was so excited. <laughs> to see a familiar face and be able to talk to them yeah it was so nice and then all the random people around were like oh what are you uh, uh, and it's like hey man I'm like sorry we're talking and not just shopping or whatever but like i haven't seen this guy in weeks literally weeks it's It'll be nice when we get back to seeing each other again. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I love doing uh, this right here where we're just sitting and just talking. Uh, like even before I did this, right, this, these conversations didn't get to really happen in my life. Like you, you meet, you see someone and you, know, you say, what's up? How you doing? Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit answers, right? It's like everybody has this automated thing where if you run into somebody usually we're fucking busy as hell i don't got time to just sit and talk for two hours to somebody and uh and neither do they you know they're running their lives and we're all in this we're all trapped in this game and right. sometimes you get you get you forget that's a fucking game you're playing and you get lost in this whole like i gotta get more money and i gotta you know i gotta get i have all this work and everything's up my ass and it's just like yeah, you, you, you step back from it for a second. I, well, I, but, uh, I, I, I take, um, I think we need to step back from your statement of more money. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think there, I think there is a point where you hit that, if you will, and flatten the curve, if yeah. that's the new term. And, uh, I feel like I hit that a couple of years ago, um, shortly before I met you, and I didn't really realize it, nor embrace it or accept it until this all happened that I realized that, you know what, I finally did that. Like when I was in university in the early mid-90s, 
I felt like if I did this, that, and the other, and I had this bucket list, right? Like yeah. that's, that was a term that came out in a movie that everyone embraced, right? And there's these 10 things. And um, I truly thought that I had that and was doing something similar to that for many years before that ever became a m m movie. I'm not trying to say I'm so cool or whatever. But um, there's only one thing on that original list that I have not done. And then because of all of this and what's going on, yeah. and it's really starting to sink in, like for a month or two, I mean, it's been almost two months now, I really thought that I was at the worst. Yeah. And... Um, it's i i really feel like there's an opportunity for it to come back again like i i i i foresee things even if it's not with what i've been doing currently yeah there may be other opportunities there may be other things that i can do um i don't know really how to put that all into words yet it's just of what i've been it's I think that's part of what's so difficult about the situation is is like like you when you're really f flipping good at doing something yeah it's really hard to even consider something different I totally feel you on that man like doing anything besides audio for money would just feel like what the fuck am I doing right now right like I worked my whole life I've I've learned all these skills and like been doing this for fuck what 20 plus years I've been doing audio making records mixing live bands putting on shows for corporate assholes it's like I don't know how to, what, uh, what else I'm gonna do like if I have to fucking I mean I'm willing to do other shit but, uh, you know, I set out a long time ago to make that my life, and I was successful at that. It wasn't like, I didn't fall into that. I chose that, you know, that was, and then yeah, I, I, exactly. I, and I That's set these goals, and I accomplished those goals, and then the world took all that away. And it, exactly. it hurts. It hurts a lot. And, and you don't know if it's ever going to come back, right? Or at least in the uh, amazing fashion that it was in. I mean, it was a fucking gold mine. I mean, we were just, I, I, it was great. It was fucking great. Like, we, you know, you're making good money. You're, I mean, for me to go out and put up speakers and play with microphones and consoles and get paid a really fair, like, more than fair wage, right? Like, th th we're getting paid well, you know? And uh, it's... uh. It was a blessing, and you know, we were very lucky to have it yes. while it, while it existed. Absolutely, no, and that's exactly uh, no. You're you're you are expressing exactly the same feelings that I've been feeling, and that I've been wrestling with, and I've been having a very difficult time with. Yeah, it's it's hard, right? Yeah, I'm not alone. No, you're not at all. I mean, we're as a specialist in the, in a technical industry, right? It's like you you get to a certain point where there's all this specialty work and then all of a sudden there's no work at all and, and it's not even just for us it's yeah. for our industry the whole period. industry yeah and so it when it starts stopped. picking back up it's like uh you know we're uh, we're gonna be stoked just to get a fucking av tech job you know it's like yes please give me money like of course i want money you know and until it starts getting to a certain point where um you know there's just that that abundance of work again you know you just have to you, you're kind of we're kind of fuck taking what we can get you know and it's going to be a bunch you're going to you're going to be in a competitive market thankfully we have good reputations you know we've we've spent our entire fucking lives building this reputation behind us so people know that we're going to show up and do a good fucking job for them and uh and you know people like us will get the calls first you know but then th there's going to be a lot of people struggling to compete in, in that that fucking marketplace where who knows how many of these gigs are going to come back it's definitely not going to be 
like it's it was. Be, no. Where, it, yeah, where, it, fuck, man. I mean, it was just unstoppable. I, I would work 30 days in a row. I, that was my that was my rule, right? I had to I had to make the rule with Angela, which was you're not allowed to work past 30 days in a row, Jason. Right, like, because I did it once, and it's just like, dude, don't do that to yourself. Like, fuck money, you know, fuck money, man. Like, don't do that to your body. Don't do that to your mind. It's not worth money, and and it's like you, it's not worth anything. And so we had that rule. It was like, it doesn't matter, you know. Like, you have to turn that job down because you have to take days off. You're not, and but that was a world we lived in. It was just that was uh, optional. It was just like, nah, I don't need. To. Chan walks around with that sweater all the time. Mm-hmm. I love his sweater. Hashtag no, no days, days off. off. Yeah, <laughs> because you, we could do that, you know, and we could do that getting paid at a specialty rate because there's just nothing but fucking shows all over the country and everywhere, everywhere. And you know how, how many people know how to do all this technical skill, like specialty work? Not that many. And it's just it puts us in this this beautiful beautiful place where we just fucking you know you, we can once upon a time really do well for ourselves and uh yeah i'm glad i'm kind of relieved honestly that 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 took a step back because i wasn't capable of turning it down right like i realized that after it went away and why was that because why, why, why weren't you why, why can't you turn it down why can't you take a day off because I'm a greedy bitch, and no, um, I'm trying to get out of. No, I'm I mean, tri- I'm, I'm for yeah. real. Like, don't yeah. just deflect. No, no, um, no. I was just trying to get to a certain point where I wasn't in debt anymore, and like, you know, it's like, I get that. Getting to it, getting to a certain place. Like, I, I, I didn't just go to like a college and get college debt, right? Like, I got out of college, and then I spent every dime I had, like building. The the studio upstairs and like fucking getting all my equipment together for my fucking band stuff and then the PA and then the lighting rig and then the fucking video systems and it's like now I have Space Brain Productions right and uh, a college degree but then behind me is well, you fucking still owe a lot of money and um, uh, I'm trying to just get that all out of the way so I was just like fuck it I'm just gonna work 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 and uh, and who gives a shit you know I'll be standing on the other side of this zero <laughs> which is really important to me, right? Because, like, no matter if I put, like, I put money in savings and you put money aside for a rainy day and, like, you have money, right? But it's, like, but there's still this fucking negative number that's your cre- that's your debt overall to, like, the well, world. Uh, but right? Yeah, but everyone has that. Yeah, but I fucking know that I'm capable of getting rid of that for the most part. It's except for, like, well, you get rid of it and then you b- and then buy a house and then get it back, right? But it's, like, it's the game. It's ups and downs. Well, if you don't have negative yeah. debt, then you have no credit. Yeah, well, exactly. Mm-hmm. And so by... Uh, I I spent from 95 till four, 2016 with no credit cards, no credit score. I was N.A. When they ran my credit to buy our current house, Yeah, I was N.A. That's below zero non-applicable i was a ghost in the system because i have not had any credit score for 20 plus years that's so crazy like dude i i just couldn't do it like like coming off of like i mean um like it's possible yeah you can do it it is you know but it was just just like buy everything when you can afford it for it yeah i just i just did it i'm just saying oh yeah i Remember, my m- I got a fancy car. It's a Corolla. <laughs> See, and I was always good about that, right? Like, uh, I always bought cheap ass cars and just drove them in the ground. And like, you know, for me, it was like, it's this monthly equation that you come up with, right? It's like, well, a fucking new car is going to cost me, you know, five hundred, six hundred, and fifty, seven hundred dollars. Plus, you got to throw gas in that bitch, and then. Um, It's like, or I could just buy a car outright and it'll last me, let's call it uh, a year and a half. I paid a thousand bucks for that fucking car, (laughs) right? And I'm going to put like another 500 into fixing it and the insurance is going to be dirt cheap. The registration is going to be dirt fucking cheap. And I'm paying like, you know, 200 bucks a month to drive, including gas, as opposed Uh to, you know, as opposed to like the five, six hundred, seven hundred dollars that it costs to drive a fancy fucking nice car. And I did it once. I bought a I bought a new car one time. You do realize currently everyone's getting like three weeks to the gallon, right? 
Yeah, I understand that part. <laughs> but that doesn't change the fact that you know you buy a car and then you have to get two hundred fifty dollar a month insurance on your f- you know four hundred dollar lease, and it's like oh wow that's six hundred fifty dollars before I even discuss you know putting gas in this fucking thing and like moving it back and forth from my house to the places I go, um, and so it just adds up really fucking fast, really fast. And then you're not you're you're making those payments right. You're like oh yeah I made that fucking four hundred fifty dollar payment. And it's like well yeah fifty dollars went to the car. Dude, if you're making a f- yeah. Four hundred and fifty dollar payment. You better have like an Escalade. That's with what like, I'm saying. With like flashing mirrors and like it yeah. shoots pyro out the fucking rear view mirrors. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like you don't need that fucking thing. You do not need that at all. I mean, you see, I drive a fucking '96 Toyota 4Runner. It's, it gets me from A to B, and I love that truck. I love that truck to death. <laughs> I bought that. I bought that truck for three grand cash. Thirty, thirty-three, thirty-three hundred. Fucking. Uh, and I just, I fucking had that car for, our truck for what, six years, seven years? What a fucking steal. So I was hearing at one point that we were going to talk about video games. I love video games. And I know you love video games. I'm, so. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a real big fan of video games. Can we take a quick pause for the cause and then we can talk about video games? Yeah, we can do whatever, bro. We can do whatever. I'll, uh, I'll just, just, just go. Just go we're going to take a commercial break here. Commercial break. Like, uh, we Buy that decoder ring and get your uh, extra sanitized soap. I used to have a lamp that did this. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I had so many lamps that did this. It'll totally reach all the way over to you, bro. It should reach all the way to your mouth. I was trying to get it out of the camera shot. Oh, it's a podcast. You got a fucking microphone's going to be in the camera shot on the podcast. Look at that. All right. So, fucking, what are you playing right now? Um, I just started Assassin's Creed Odyssey like two or three days ago. Those games are hella fun, man. Yeah, it like I was trying to find a new game that I hadn't played in forever, right? Or just something new because, you know, it's been two months into it. I've been really into COD with friends and like I've been really enjoying that multiplayer online experience of working with other people and just, you know, having that community experience of talking to other people. We usually get together at seven, we're usually done at ten. It's great, you know, and everyone's got families and other people in their lives and we do the thing. So, uh, I've been trying to find a game where when it's not 7 to 10 in the evening and the rest of the world's going on and I still have to be in my house, um, I've been liking uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And it's very similar to Red Dead Redemption 2, but ancient Greece. So you get to ride the horses, but instead of having guns, you get bows and arrows and swords and spears and clubs and maces and axes and, you know, everything it seems ex- everything but magic spells. I haven't gone to the DLC. I heard that, that might be in there. I have no spoilers, you know. Ha. Huh. I, uh, I might have to check that out. They said it's like Red Dead Redemption 2. It, it's very similar, yeah. Yeah, I fucking loved Red Dead Redemption 2. That was probably one of my favorites right there, man. I spent so much time playing Red Dead Redemption 2. It was ridiculous. Fucking ridiculously long game. I think it was like a <laughs> 100-hour story mode. I don't know how long this one is, but uh, it had two more DLCs that I did not get, and it seemed like it was going to be uh, quite some time. Again, I had already bought it and didn't realize I had bought it at the same time that a couple other games had come out. So it's nice that, um, it was basically free to me (laughs) at this point. I love that. I actually have all of them for free as well. My, uh, my Xbox buddy, uh, Chris, shout out zombie love bunny. Thank you, Chris, for sharing your home Xbox with me. Uh, we, uh, he buys all the Assassin's Creed, or, uh, yeah, the Assassin's Creed, he, I fucking, I think there's like, so, there's so many of them. Yeah, I go, there I go there to are the, so many of them. Yeah. But every story is great, though. They, they put a lot of time and a lot of effort. I've, I've, uh, honestly, I haven't finished one yet. Like, I start, I've started a couple. Never. No, I started a couple, and then I, uh, 
I don't I don't get into the storyline. Like it comes out of the world, right? And then it's like he's in that now all of a sudden it's like a tech world or something, right? And, and like it, it, it's There's two always it's like two a simulation or something like that. Right. right? There's always. And then right and then he comes back in and like I, I just like ah, I'm gonna play something else. I lost focus on it, right, when that happened. And I tried a different one and did the same thing and then I lost focus at the same point again where I went to the tech world and I was like, Man, everybody fucking loves these games and I see my buddies playing them. Uh, and they look fucking really cool and then I get distracted like a fucking yeah I just I can't focus on it uh, but the one where you were a pirate I saw that's that one the black sails the one. black sails one so that that's what really that, that, cool that's where I was gonna get to it as is um, you whatever time period that you really enjoy in history there's basically a version of that game that exists right so the pirate one which is very close to my heart uh there's the american history one which i believe is called three don't quote me on that because yeah. there's so many different names um the other one was uh the elizabethan in uh london i think that was called syndicate and then um, the last, this last one in Greece, and then there was one before, right before it too, uh, Origins, which was the Egyptian one. These are all really, really like they take a lot, like they they take a lot of time to find places and things and make little stories and games out of everything, and they've gotten a lot better about making it not so repetitive of doing the same little task just making it harder over and over again to finish the task you know yeah because that happens a lot in those very big like open world games they'll like develop a game style right like there's like oh there's, 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 yeah, fallout did that right where there was like eh, there's like yeah. five kind of game there's like five kind of missions that are going to happen and they're going to change them up a little bit right a, and uh, then different it's place just more difficult you're doing the same time. goddamn mission it's right. just in a different spot right. and that and gets old really so fast zelda did that to me no everybody raves about the new zelda and I was like, by the time I got through like the thirtieth fucking like little mini dungeon, I was just like, God Wait, damn! The new one that just came out for the Switch? Yeah, not the one that just came out, which would be Link's Awakening, not the remake from the of the Game Boy Color game or whatever. Oh. Okay. But um, the like the full 3D like super new one, Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild. Okay. Yeah. 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 I have not played it, but it, it I really have cool. intimate knowledge of two people that have played it yeah. extensively. So I, I really want to hear what you have to say about this because yeah. I know how much they r really enjoy that. Yeah. And, and just as a third person point of view of never because I, I like with the switch like I'll just straight up say it like I can't I can't use the controllers because they're like if I move my hands around in the yeah. wrong way it makes stuff happen that like like that's a whole nother level of not just being the AB and the thumbsticks right well, do you ha do you get a like this thing right here Yeah, no, that, 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 no, yep, yep, use, e, the, those help, those help, those help, but you know what I'm saying, so you understand what I'm saying about the other thing, right? Showing them my little controller yes. things. Yes, yes. Yeah, no, you I do, because, like, when I play, um, with just the Switch as, like, a mobile device, or, like, using it as, like, a Game Boy or whatever, right? Like, I do it mostly as a mobile device. And uh, my thumbs start fucking hurting. And it's hard to get your hands around the trigger buttons. I, I gotta get the little, like, I think they make a, um... They make a, a little gripper thing version. for it. There, there is, and you don't even slide the thing, you leave the thing slid in, and you yeah. put it into the charger... And you can get a whole other controller that's the same as any other PlayStation or Xbox controller. Oh, I've seen those too. Yeah. And even the that's the one the even the boy pre prefers. Yeah, yeah. I'd prefer a regular controller as well, for sure. Fucking uh, oh, <laughs> woo! There it went. Fucking uh, what was I saying? Goddamn pollen out in my yard dude have you dude you guys see my backyard it is like solid yellow out there man it is <laughs> fucking crazy i have no i believe it yeah 
Dude, I haven't, uh, I never had allergies before I moved to the desert. I fucking, I was just like, no problem at all. And then I moved out here, and then every fucking May, it just tears me apart. Thankfully, I'm like hiding inside the whole time because we're all quarantined and shit, and I got really nice air filters. <laughs> um, because we were like, well, we're going to be inside smoking weed the whole fucking time. So, I mean, we might as well have some nice air filters on the, the system. And uh, so I didn't do too bad. Like, I haven't taken allergy pills yet. But I think I was about to the point where I'm like, I'm fucked. I'm, I'm going to start. Okay. I, I don't I don't think so yet. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, fucking. Uh, and the fucking dog goes outside and loves that shit. She she wants to roll around in it, <laughs> you know. And we're like, no, we got to watch her ass. We got to, we gotta, you know, fucking open the door and stand by the back door. You can't just let her go out there by herself anymore. She's like, look at all this fucking crazy stuff out here. What is this <laughs> glorious substance to roll all the fuck around and drag through the house? Goddamn dog. You jump up on, yeah. She'll just jump up on everything and fucking cover the whole house and pollen if you don't don't watch that little bitch so yeah did you try the new uh war zone i have what'd you think about that i really enjoy it yeah i i think that it's better than most of the other battle royales um i th i really like the plunder mode where you can get your uh own kit when you come in or in the war zone when you drop in um, the kit where you can get yours. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty fun game, man. I really enjoyed it. Coming off of like, what was it, fucking, I've been playing the PUBG. Going back to yeah. that kind of stuff, you know, after playing the Call of Duty versions, it's kind of hard to get into it as much. Right. You know, those fucking, those Call of Duty ones look really good. And they fixed a lot of the gameplay bullshit that, that was going on with the fucking PUBG one. It's been going, it's been going really well, for sure. Yeah. I love that Battle Royale style. Th like, that's a genius uh, format, though. I think PUBG was the originator of the format, right? Or... Uh, uh, that I cannot speak to in yeah. any or was way, it short. Uh, I don't know, man. Yeah. I, I don't know. That Battle Royale format's fucking awesome. I think the uh, idea of broadcasting it and having everyone be able to watch it and uh, see it is genius and uh, we should definitely keep supporting that oh yeah we're on the cusp of doing that just before this all happened so oh dude it's great man uh no my homies anthony fucking ray uh team runk always out there fucking doing their thing on mixer and uh they're actually on a battle royale uh kick lately and um, yeah, I'll jump in and play with those guys as well on the team runk fucking thing every once in a while. Fucking uh, yeah, they they've been they've been loving doing the mixer thing though, and it's cool because if you're doing well, they'll uh, promote your actual like stream, right? So like whenever they get into like the last the last two teams or whatever that are fucking playing, all of a sudden you know mixer switches it up to this fucking uh, special window where it really promotes your stream and so you can get viewers and get people that are like interested in your uh in your gaming channel because you're a good gamer which are like i i think that's such a fucking great way to promote it right it's like not just what's it called is it the hot zone or something like that right i have i have no idea but uh <laughs> i really do yeah it's fucking great though because like if you're a good gamer you're always in that fucking place where people go to f see someone who's about, who's about to win you know because oh, you want to see that, that chicken sounds really nice yeah it's good to see people like that win <laughs> <laughs> right get to fucking play oh yeah no i uh, i definitely play with some people that i really enjoy playing with on a regular basis and we definitely get close to the top a lot yeah yeah and it's you know it's great but you know that's not where i'm trying to get to i'm trying to get back to uh doing what we used to do you know what i mean yeah the games are secondary I find it fun that uh, that could be another uh, extension of things. Yeah. I, uh, I've been wanting to get back into, what, GTA. Fucking that GTA Online is, like, such a great simulator of reality. <coughs> Fucking, uh, it, uh... Wow, that was a really nice fucking duck. Right? <laughs> 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 you like that? 
Fucking fro here, baby, fro. <laughs> fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> smoking the fucking joint on the break. <laughs> so now we're coughing it back up. Pause. <coughs> Time out. <laughs> Time out. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. We're gonna fucking laugh at that shit. No, uh, no dude. I fucking. Th I think it's so cool though. You got uh, such a good simulator of 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 the world. You know, you can just fucking do all kinds of cool stuff. You can get on there with a team and like kind of have a spy brigade and shit. Um, after doing all these like different online formats i find myself like realizing that was probably the the best one that that happened i should and i should probably get back to going and playing a little gta online and appreciating that world a little bit more and and what is it exactly that that one does that the rest don't do i think simulate all the collateral damage around you right like there's all these fucking npcs that are moving back and forth doing right? their own thing in yeah. the world um but that's very buildings. impressive and then um yeah you can, I mean, so there are certain buildings you can interact with but not you know you can't just like go inside everything well, i'm sorry but, i didn't mean to interrupt you go go on but no it's uh no, I, I just like that whole um scenario where you can get a team everyone has their their like special thing you know it's like watching a fucking spy movie or you know some kind of cool ass f like uh, it's it's just instead of just like all right we're all gonna jump in and fucking kill everybody all right you got a machine gun I got a machine gun he's got a machine gun shoot the fucker in the face <laughs> right right it's like got a little more finesse to it so yeah that's all I uh I was playing some with uh with Noah and uh <coughs> god damn fucking Noah has been uh he's been playing forever and so he has like a fucking billion dollars. So playing with him is super fun. Right. We uh, he, we, uh, we go do all the fucking top missions, and we're stealing fucking huge planes and taking down fucking, I don't know, it's just so awesome stuff. And all the same people yeah. we play COD with, so maybe you should grab that one up too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the new COD looks tight. You been enjoying that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm like... I, that is my biggest stress relief recently. Besides the, uh, like I said, the new single player is like there's either play with people or play a game. Yeah. The fir the uh, story mode on those fucking Call of Duty games are great. Oh man, the newest one <laughs> is is the when you get to the sniper mission, you'll lose your mind. You'll be like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I like that they gave away the war zone too. Like, just so you can get into the fucking game and kind of get your hands in it, you know, fucking play a little bit. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Fucking perfect timing, right when everybody's trapped at home. It's like, here's a free version of our game. I think they were probably gonna do it anyways, but it did work out. Yeah, it worked out great. I'm sure, they made a decent decent profit off of that. Yeah. Well, there's no in-game buy anything. Yeah. Right? I like that it's totally free. It's pretty cool. I mean, Fortnite does it too, right? Where the game's free, but if you want to customize your character or do anything fucking fancy, you know, you got to pay a little bit of money. Oh, yeah, well, but that doesn't mean you get any advantage of winning. Yeah. No, you don't. You just get more viewers. I always like to put on, uh, if I want to put on a, a, a Fortnite stream I always find someone who has the most ridiculous costume to follow <laughs> right like <laughs> he's got the most sp fucking sparkles and fucking sequins on their thing so they're just running around fucking Wah! well then on that note then you know a friend that runs around naked with uh, <coughs> boxers and uh, pink hearts yes that's not me yeah that would actually uh, <laughs> that's, that's my character in GTA right is <laughs> <laughs> I is forgot that about that. Is that you or is that somebody else? <laughs> That's fucking. Oh, I think he. No, Noah has. Ah. A, yeah. <laughs> 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 fucking. Uh, no, my guy's uh, uh -huh. got the pink braids. The, the yeah, the fucking cornrows and the cowboy boots and the uh, and the boxers with the the hearts on them. And so, what's the best way to wrap this up? Uh, just like that, you, you I could say, uh, it's already been fucking free, you know what, god damn, yeah, we easily got an hour out of this goddamn conversation, I love it, 
So, yeah, it's been a pleasure having you on here. It's been fun having you over, man, talking shit. I'll snip this fucking thing all up into, you know, a beautiful little podcast for everybody to enjoy. And uh, I won't yeah. get in trouble. <laughs> no, I'm going to make sure to put all the the stuff that I had rolling whenever we, uh, I told you I was, I, I had the cameras off and that's all that we're going to air <laughs> is just all the fucking secrecy, all that shit. You should hear all the shit this guy talks about everybody whenever the cameras are off. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just fucking kidding. No, this has been a great time, man. I love having you over here, man. And uh, uh, we got to have you back as well. And uh, we'll be playing You're online. Fun. <laughs> so, yeah, this has been To the Fullest with uh, Jason Froberg. Uh, once again, thank you, Jeremy Morrow. And uh, peace. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching my podcast. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here. We are a new podcast every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.